Last summer, Cassie Hutchinson, remember her, a former aide in the Trump White House, told the January 6th committee about that incident where Donald Trump wanted to join the rioters at the Capitol on January 6th. Hutchinson told the committee that the story was told to her by Tony Ornato, an agent who left the Secret Service to become Trump's deputy chief of staff. Well, this week, we've learned that about half a dozen Secret Service agents have testified before the grand jury investigating Trump's attempts to overturn the election. We do not yet know if Ornato or Bobby Engel, who drove Trump that day, were among them. Special Counsel Jack Smith is also investigating possible fraud by former Trump lawyers like Rudy Giuliani in their repeated false claims about the election, according to The Washington Post. In fact, CNN reports tonight that Giuliani has been interviewed by federal investigators as part of the probe. Apparently, that interview happened in recent weeks. And in yet another sign, this investigation is in full swing. Tomorrow, federal investigators are scheduled to interview Georgia Secretary of State Brad Raffensperger, who got the infamous call from Trump asking for just 11,780 votes. Betsy Woodrow Swan is a national correspondent at Politico, and she joins me now. Um, Betsy, there's a lot to get to here. Um, first, I would just say, as someone who's sort of reporting on the general investigation, it, it does seem like there is more activity and more activity on the surface, and we're learning more and more of the key players than we have ever seen before from Jack Smith on the January 6th part of the investigation. Yeah, that's no question. There's just a massive amount of churn going on right now in terms of what Jack Smith is up to. The way that this looks to some people uh, watching from the outside is that Smith is is needing to fill in certain gaps in his investigations, calling back in witnesses who've already been interviewed, interviewing witnesses who've already produced materials that were subpoenaed, following up on outreaches that his team first made many, many months ago. In the lead up to the Mar-a-Lago documents investigation, there were a lot of folks in sort of the witness lawyer community who started getting a little bit of a spidey sense about mm. an indictment coming, a little bit of a prickling on the back of the mm. neck. I have yet to speak to people who have that very specific sense about uh. a possible indictment being imminent when it comes to this January 6th investigative thread that Jack Smith is pulling. But there's no question that he's pulling it hard, and there's no question that just because the criminal proceedings in South Florida are getting really, really busy, that does not appear whatsoever to be impeding this parallel work going on that's focused on the date of January 6th and the days leading up to it. So there's a few, like, main... What's striking to me is there's a there's obviously a, a, a bunch of parallel inquiries that one would have around the entire scheme to overturn the election. Um, Raffensperger, someone that you would want to speak to, right? He's talking to him tomorrow. Rudy Giuliani, obviously someone you would have to speak to. We find out just now that apparently he's talked to federal investigators. So the sort of big names. But then there's also, like, the fake electors and the fraud aspect of this. This is from The Washington Post reporting. The Justice Department's investigation of efforts by Donald Trump and his advisors to overturn the election. Um, prosecutors focused on ads and fundraising pitches claiming election fraud as well as plans for fake electors. And, in fact, we know about that immunity uh, to two of them from Nevada. That, that strikes me as significant. It was also an area the January 6th committee focused on. Yeah, and the fact that those two folks are from Nevada is particularly interesting. Of all the different states where the alternate or fake elector scheme was ongoing, Nevada is important because the state legislature at the time, and I believe still, was controlled entirely by Democrats. And some of these other states, including Georgia, some of these fake electors, the day they signed the fake electoral ballots, said that they were acting under advice of right. counsel, that they were taking the steps they were taking because maybe the state legislature would do their thing and there would need to be this backup remedy available. And that was something that some of those fake electors got lawyers to tell them to do. But in Nevada, that explanation, of course, wouldn't hold water and wouldn't be relevant at all because there was a 0% chance yes. that the Democratic-controlled <laughs> yes. legislature in Nevada was going to throw out the lawful electoral votes. So the fact that Jack Smith's team, at least from where we sit, seems to be particularly leaning into the Nevada piece of this is uniquely interesting. The fact that it's taken him so long to talk to Brad Braffensberger is also interesting. Of course, everyone watching this show knows Bonnie Willis, the district attorney in Georgia, is working on a fast-moving case looking specifically at the Georgia piece of this probe. 
We also know DOJ doesn't like uh, necessarily getting involved in redundant ways with state and local criminal proceedings. So the fact that there's been this action in Nevada, I think is particularly interesting. I think it's a state that people should be keeping an eye on as they're tracking the, the it feels like, as they're tracking the zillions of threads that Jack Smith is, and his team are pulling right now. Yeah, that's a really, really great point. I hadn't even put that two and two uh, together till you just said it. Um, Betsy Woodruff-Swan, that's why we have you on. Thank you.